Okay, so in this recording, uh, what we will be doing is we will be building the budget request SharePoint list form uh, process from scratch, where we will be using some of the uh, latest uh, SharePoint permission shapes, which a lot of people have been talking about. Okay, so we, we have an enhanced version of budget request list form. Before we do this demo, what is best is that we, if we have already done this demo in past, we should go ahead and clean uh, clean it up because uh, it would have all the source process associations and list items from previous runs. So I'll go to the budget request list over here. If there are any list items, select the list items, go to items and click on delete. I don't have any right now. And then remove the workflow association. So go to the list. Click on Agile Point Workflow. Select the, the workflow and click on Remove. Once it is removed, click on Close. At the same time, you, you should go to your Agile Point tenant. Login as Office 365. If you are using Office 365 credential, go to build apps. And if you have the old application still there, like budget request list form, in my case, I already deleted it. But if you had the old application, select on it and you can always click on the delete button over here to clean up. Okay, I already had uh, done that, so I don't have that old application. Now, our demo scenario is that we have a list over here called budget request, and there is a bunch of columns in there called description amount requested department email requester date requested and then i have two special columns over here which uh, stores the manager approval decision and cfo approval decision our scenario would be that if uh, the amount is greater than five thousand dollars go for cfo approval else go for manager approval and we will be using sharepoint list form as the ui over here so first thing uh, what we will do is we will switch back to our uh, app builder environment over here and click on add an app we'll make more space by minimizing this okay we'll call this app budget request dash list forms copy it so that you can sorry uh, copy it so that you can uh, you can save time for typing other things click on next then it would ask you to provide a name for the process model i'll use the same name in the process triggered by this time we instead of e forms we will say sharepoint we'll give it two swim lanes click next it would ask you because i selected sharepoint as the data source it would ask you uh, okay what sharepoint environment are you going to connect to so that it can uh, download the metadata of that list or library and i can easily design my workflow against it so this is for the design time convenience um, so my process is a aware of the metadata so i'll go ahead and say okay just call it budget request list form now my it team might have exposed some access token to me i don't have to know the urls or username of passwords uh, uh, for connecting to sharepoint they might have already done that in my case uh, I, i'll say i'll define a new one so that you can see how a new one is defined as well which will be which will create an application level access token which is only accessible within my application so i'll give it a name it would ask me for the URL of site collection. So I'll go ahead, copy it. I will say that I, because I'm connecting to Office 365 environment, I'll select claims authentication, Office 365, scroll down. It would ask me for a username password. So I'll provide the username. Then click on test connection to see if the credentials I have provided is correct. It says connection is successful and done. Once that is done, the access token is available uh, within my drop down and it is selected. Based on the access token, uh, the next drop down uh, automatically figures out what all sites are available within, uh, within that site collection. I will select the root site. Then what list? So my list called budget request is available over there. I'll say I want to design workflow against the budget request list and click finish. This will bring up the design surface. Now as per my, my uh, demo scenario, a user would come in and submit a form. 
So I'll go to the SharePoint stencil over here. The first shape I will drag and drop is the start list form. I'm going to use list form as the form technology in this case. So I'll go ahead and say start list form. This will connect to my Office 365 environment and, and uh, as you can see it is now retrieving all the list names and columns within that list. So it retrieved that and I'll say for the first view I, because it's a submit form I want everything to be editable and hide the approval fields. So what we are basically doing over here is we are converting an otherwise the static SharePoint list where everything is visible into a more dynamic view of it so we convert a sharepoint list into a more dynamic view kind of a thing click on next give it a name say submit next it would ask me to assign a participant i would just say anybody can associate uh, can uh, submit this request so the the participant is called process initiator which is an inbuilt macro click finish Next, what we will do is, I'll I, in my scenario, the if you see over here in the list, if I go to list permission, permissions of this list, following users have uh, access to uh, access to the uh, list item or list, right? So you can see there are four groups and one individual user. Uh, the name of that user is manager. And he has view only privileges as part of my workflow. I'll have this manager. Uh, I, I will elevate his privileges just on this list item so that he can he can edit a list item. But and at the end of the workflow, I'll roll it back as well. Okay, so for the first thing I will do is before I elevate his privileges because the list currently if you see it is inheriting the permission from its parent. I'll first break the role inheritance. So I'll drag and drop the break inheritance permission shape. Click next. Select my access token, which is budget request list form. Now it would ask me which level I want to break inheritance on. I would, in my case, it is only on a list item level. So the, the rest of the fields appear dynamically. So I'll say, okay, on the root side, there is a list called budget request list. And I want to break it for current list item. So there is an again in system data, there is an inbuilt macro for that called list item ID. So dynamically at runtime, it would figure out uh, the current list items ID for me and, and execute the shape and click finish. Next, I will go ahead and set some permissions uh, on this list item. So I will, uh, because this user called manager had only uh, view only permissions. I want to give him temporarily the design and edit permissions. That's what we are going to assign it to him. So go ahead and click next. Again, I'll, I'll select the list item ID because I'm, I'm working on list item level, root site, budget request, and do the same thing over here that I want to work against a current list item. So I'll scroll down, I'll say list item. Click next. Now it would ask me which, uh, which uh, user or group I want to alter the permission from. If it was a variable, I could have dragged and dropped the variable from here. Like the, uh, if a name was coming from a from a SharePoint list. In my case, it is a, I'm, just so that we can track the demo better. I'm going to select a static user. So it is going to bring down the site user over here. I'm going to bring down a static user called manager. Click next. And I'll say, OK, I'll go ahead and give him design and edit permission and click finish. Let's go ahead and make some space. Okay, so I'll, I'll increase this a little bit. Okay, so next we will check for for the amount some entered on that list item. So I'll drag and drop a, a multi condition shape from my generic stencil. I'll 
give it a name display name called say approval so the rule name would be more than 5k so what my rule is if it is more than 5k go for cfo approval else go for manager approval so while designing the rule i'll expand this and this time because because i'm working off data which was entered on a sharepoint list and that was used as my data source i'll go to data source i'll drag and dra all the list i list sharepoint list fields are available over here i'll just drag and drop amount requested and say if amount requested is greater than five thousand dollars now it could have been a variable i could have dragged and dropped another variable but for so that we can track it better i'll set it to five thousand dollars click finish okay now next step would be i'll go ahead and ass assign this task to cfo for approval so this time because it's not a submit form i'll drag and drop another shape called standard list form and i'll say that mark all the fields as read only only the cfo approval field should be editable and manager approval field because it is not applicable should be hidden call it cfo approval and for the participant just for the sake of convenience so that i don't have to log out and log in i will assign it to process initiator the same user as initi who initiated it i can assign it to groups or roles as well okay click finish one last thing uh, we will do is we will add one more shape in here to restore permission so once my work is done i should restore the permission i broke the role inheritance so i should restore it back so i'll drag and drop uh, this shape over here I'll select the access token as budget request list form and say that I want to restore permission on this list item and we'll see at runtime how it behaves uh, uh, okay I'll point it to the list and do the same thing over here I'll point it to list item ID and finish okay and last thing what I will do over here is I'll complete rest of the workflow so I'll say that if amount was less than $5,000, assign this task to manager for approval. I'll just repeat what I did for CFO. Okay. So, I'll go ahead and say manager should be editable and CFO should be read only. Manager approval. And this time I will assign it to the process initiator like in pass so that I can save time. I don't have to log in and log out. But at the same time, I'll also assign it to a user called manager. So I've, I'm assigning it to two users because this is the participant i'm giving permissions to and restoring it right so like let's click finish i made a mistake i should have assigned it to the shape okay that's it so that we can track the demo better after submit I, uh, so that i can show that okay how the role inheritance is uh, is broken i'll just put a 30 second timer over here so that you you can actually see uh, what exactly is happening so I'll just put a 30 second delay so that you can track it better. I'll just call it wait for 30 seconds. Okay. Now our workflow is done. Let's just quickly hit validate. It says process model validated successfully. Go ahead and save it. Go back to the app builder and click publish. You can go with the default label or give your own label click ok so our, our workflow is built let's just quickly switch back to the list so here was my budget request list 
Now let's go ahead and associate the workflow. So click on list, click on agile point workflow. Give it a name, say br underscore demo. I want to create a kick off a workflow whenever a new item is inserted in this list. It would ask me which workflow do I want to associate. We'll go ahead and say budget request list form the, the one we just now created. Click on latest. I can associate it with any of the previous versions of the workflow or I can say that always always pick up the latest version. Click submit. Says process association has been successful. Let's go ahead and close this and let's go ahead and kick off a new workflow. So I'll click on new item. So if you remember in my first uh, view, the submit view, I had sub specified that do not show the CFO approval and manager approval field. So those are all hidden. So the otherwise static SharePoint list has been complete uh, converted into a more of a dynamic view. So I'll just say demo. I'll ent knowingly enter an amount uh, less than $5,000 so that it goes for manager for approval. I'll just complete rest of the form. And click save. Now let's look at the permission of this item. So let's go ahead and click advanced manage permission. You can see right now it says the list item inherits permissions from its parent and the manager is a user called manager has view only permission. Let's go back. The workflow has been kicked off. So let's go ahead and click on in progress link. So it is waiting on that delay shape. The reason I put that so that we can see that before before the break role inheritance or set permission took place, uh, the actual permission was inherited from the parent. So within next 10, 15 seconds, it should move forward. It broke the role inheritance. It set the new permission and now it is it is at a uh, manager approval shape. OK, so let's let's go ahead and look at the list item. So if you go to budget request. Open it again, go to advance, manage permission. So you can see it says now this list item has unique permission. That means the break role inheritance took place and also manager now has design and edit permission just on this list item. So our, our two shapes, the permission shapes executed. And if we come back uh, over here, you can see because I added two participants over there. One was my, my process initiator and one was the manager user. Both are available. Now I'll, I could log in as manager and complete the task because now I have edit permissions on this list item just for the sake of uh, saving time. I'll, I'll go ahead and do it right from here itself. I'll say take assignment and open as, as the process initiator. Uh, pop up is blocked. So let me just open this. Okay. So I'll, I'll go ahead and open it. Now you can see the rest of the form as I specified in the manager view is all read only and the only thing editable for me is the manager approval section. I'll go ahead and click save. And go back to my list. To see what happened with the permission. So if I go back to manage permission because I said restore permission now that because because managers work is done I want to take off his permission. So you saw this that it again inherits the permission from parent and the manager permission is back to view only. And if I go over here the workflow would have completed as well. So that, that concludes uh, the, the presentation on the, this uh, budget request list form demo.